With the Daily Radio News on WKUF, I'm David Jackson for Tuesday, May 31st, 2016. Genesee County water customers are expected to see a water rate hike on July 1st. Jaquanda Johnson of the Flint Journal reports that the Great Lakes Water Authority Board approved the increase for municipalities surrounding Flint, including Davidson Township, Swartz Creek, Clio, and Grand Blanc Township. Genesee County water customers, according to Drain Commissioner Jeff Wright, should expect to see a nearly 17% increase in their water bills. Wright says that the city of Flint will not see an increase in their monthly water bills. However, Wright says that he has been seeing the Water Authority increase the county's rates in the double digits since he was elected to office 15 years ago. The GLWA is increasing water charges for an estimated 120 municipalities throughout the state and plans to switch to the Carrick 90 Water Authority have been delayed until next year due to new EPA regulations. Jim Saigo, chief deputy director of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, told a police inquiry that two of its employees, who were fired or punished in connection to the Flint water crisis, were used as scapegoats. The Detroit News reports that Mr. Saigo told investigators in a voluntary interview with the Michigan State Police that he felt as though the firing of Leanne Schechter-Smith and the suspension of Stephen Bush was politically motivated. Both employees were allegedly involved with the Flint's water crisis, and Stephen Bush was criminally charged last month by Attorney General Bill Schutte. According to Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal, the allegations of political influence in the actions taken against the MDEQ employees come just days after a letter was sent to Governor Snyder warning that the MSP investigation has the potential of complicating the criminal investigation, which recently compelled Governor Snyder to request the internal vest investigation be halted. Violent crime in the city of Flint is down slightly compared to last year. Molly Young of the Flint Journal reports that, according to a recent report from the Flint Police Department, violent crimes are down around 4% over last year during the January to May time frame. Reports of aggravated assaults are slightly up from the same time last year. However, on a positive note, the study shows that reports of robberies are down 40% year over year. In election news, the Libertarian Party held their national convention this last weekend in Orlando, Florida, where the party nominated former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson as their candidate for the President of the United States in the upcoming general election. According to Breitbart.com, a recent poll shows that Governor Johnson is pulling evenly from both Republican and Democratic nominees and has a national support of around 10 percent of voters. The Republican Party convention is scheduled to be held the week of July 18th, where presumptive nominee Donald Trump is expected to be named the Republican candidate for president, and the Democratic National Convention is scheduled to take place the week of July 25th, where either former Secretary of State Mrs. Hillary Clinton or Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders will be selected as the Democratic candidate for president. And in sports, rookie Alexander Rossi won the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500, and Martin Truex Jr., after leading for 392 of 400 laps, won NASCAR's Coca-Cola 600 on Sunday. The Detroit Tigers, after a Justin Verlander start that dominated the Angels through seven, scored their only run off of Victor Martinez's sack fly in the top of the ninth inning last night. But the run was not enough to overcome the Angels' five runs in the bottom of the eighth, off of three line drives and a throwing error by catcher James McCann. The 5-1 loss extended Detroit's losing streak to three games and drops them to 24-26. and The Tigers play in Anaheim again tonight starting at 10.05 Eastern. The Golden State Warriors took home the Western Conference Championship last night, beating the Oklahoma City Thunder in a 96-88 Game 7 win. They now face the Cleveland Cavaliers Thursday in Game 1 of the NBA Finals, and in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Finals last night, Pittsburgh beat San Jose 3-2. And finally, the Government Accountability Office released a report earlier this month that says government offices need to address aging legacy systems. The report notes that the Social Security Administration is working on equipment that is 31 years old, while the Department of Treasury is working on equipment that is reportedly 56 years old, with no firm date as to when they will transition to more modern equipment. The Department of Defense's Strategic Automated Command and Control System is reportedly running on 56-year-old computers, with some functions, such as the operational function of the nation's nuclear arsenal, running on 1970s-era IBM Series 1 computers. While the equipment may be old, the report notes that these computers are running on handcrafted COBOL programs on equipment that is reportedly hardened enough to withstand an electromagnetic pulse. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.